Hey folks, welcome back to the Bailey Workshop um, on Guitar Making Channel. So today we're going to talk about inlays. How do you make and inlay inlays? I've just seen a huge pile of chocolate on my bench. What's that doing there? Look at that. Where's that come from, Carol? <laughs> Big Gav. Big Gav. Cheers, Gav, for that. Found that at the gate, did you? Anyway, what am I talking about? Yeah. So if you want to know how to make an inlay, custom inlays, then you're in the right place. I'm going to show you um, lots of different examples of inlays. I'm going to show you materials for inlays, that's materials for inlaying into, and the materials that you use for the inlays. I'm going to show you lots of examples of that. I've got some films to show you. So um, I've got a time lapse of me doing some inlays. I did a whole fretboard and a time lapse that. It's a four minute long film. So we're going to um, we're going to play that and I'm going to talk over that um, and I'm going to actually demonstrate doing some inlays. So there are really simple ones and then there's um, more fancy sort of custom stuff. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of both towards the end. So, um, so don't go away folks, stay till the end and uh, if you're new to the channel and you've not seen me before then um, this channel's all about guitar making and everything to do with guitar making. So if that's what you're interested in, then don't forget to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and like and share and do all that youtube -y stuff down there. Um, right, so one thing I want to just say before I get started is um, I've made this website, Guitar Making Academy guitarmaking.co.uk, the Academy of Guitar Making, where I've taken, um, we run workshop courses where I've taught over 400 people face to face in my workshop how to build guitars completely from scratch. So what we did was we took that course and I filmed every stage um, and it's all very well edited and filmed from four different angles so you get to see everything and super close up and all that. So the difference is that this is live um, the courses are all done, edited, and all my um, bad jokes have been taken out and all that kind of thing. Um, with the live stream, I'm afraid you're stuck with the bad jokes and anything that happens to splurge out of my gob hole. So um, it's not as concise and not as high quality as what you'll find on the actual courses. <clears throat> so having said that, we've been working on the setup um, I've got some new lights, so it should all look a bit clearer. If Carol can just quickly go through the cameras to show you, we've got um, we've got this cam which has now got super close-up lens on it, and we can get real close, zoom right in on stuff. And we've got the overhead cam, so I've got that zoomed in at the moment. We can uh, zoom that in and out also, and this is good for looking over my shoulder. So we've got a few different angles. Hopefully we'll be able to um, show you clearly how it's done. So without further ado, let's get straight on with it. Inlays. So why would you want inlays? Well, here's a neck with inlays on it. They're usually there to mark the positions of the frets. So you don't need them at all. A lot of classical players and jazz players, they don't have any inlays on the front. Um, but I would recommend most mortals like us, we need inlays on the side. So the most simplest form of inlay is a dot. Can we have a close up please, Carol? So dots are the most simple and common type of inlay. I'm gonna show you lots of other styles of inlay, but first I wanna mention the material that we're inlaying into. So in this case, it's ebony. Now, if you're doing any kind of fancy inlays, I always recommend ebony because um, the basic technique, if I just quickly talk you through it, is uh, if you've got a shape, just pick a random shape up, you stick it on, we scribe around the outside, and then we use a miniature router to take out a little slot and then the, the inlay is glued in and then rubbed flat. <clears throat> so, 
if you imagine you've got to actually cut out the identical shape to your inlay it's really easy with a hole because you just drill a hole but with any any other shape than a round dot you're going to have to cut out a hole and so the 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 join between the inlay and the material you're inlaying into will be visible if you don't do a very good job so we try and do obviously we cut it out as neatly as we can but there are a few things we can do to make it easier for ourselves the main thing is use ebony for inlaying because when this has got a finish on it just goes black so if you inlay into this we use black glue and then you can't see the join it's absolutely well more or less invisible um, <clears throat> so if you're going to inlay then I would recommend you to, if you're doing any kind of fancy inlays then inlay into an ebony board um, another use for an inlay is to mark the headstock with the maker's name so you might want to put your name on the headstock I'll show you an example of that or a logo so this is a logo that's actually going on this headstock if I just show you that So we just scribe around it, machine a little hole, and then glue it in. So a logo on the headstock, or a name. This is my name. Old logo on the headstock. So mostly inlays are used to mark out the fret positions but we also use them for the maker's name and then from there there's a whole world of different stuff you can do um, so people often ask me how how are these done um, I'm going to show you another few examples we'll play the um, the film of examples of um, inlays now and hopefully we'll get um, picture in picture and I can talk over them <clears throat> oh, I've got to set up a picture in picture. Let me just do that now. There we go. So, Here's a few examples of different inlay materials. Audio one. Okay, got it. Okay, sorry folks, we've got sound now, so um, I'll just talk you through some of these inlays that you're seeing. Is that the start? No, I'll take it back to the start. We'll go back to the start. So here's some examples of inlays that we've done here in the workshop. The old Bailey logo. And they see the shape there, we drilled the holes first and then cut the shape out. It was easier. There's Graham Taylor's headstock the Bailey and the GT, Preston Reed's logos, they don't, uh, they don't have to be round, they can be any shape you want, but obviously it's a lot more difficult. Um, and the inlay around the edge that you can see there, I would call that binding, so we're not really talking about that today. I'm really talking about fretboard inlays and headstock inlays. There's a close-up of Preston's. 
So this is um, Heather Gem. And that's, that's a lantern that I inlaid on Sam Winston's guitar. A lantern. So you can see where I've cut the hole out. And the inlay is about to drop in there. And that's what it looked like finished. So it's not a robot. It's a lantern with a flame inside. So you, there you can see, if you can pause that, Carol, please. Here you can see a maple headstock with a mother of pearl inlay. That's very difficult. And if you look carefully at the edges, you can probably see a few, um, you know, a few gaps where the inlay isn't absolutely perfect. Now it still looks nice, but if we'd inlaid that into ebony, it would look absolutely perfect and crisp. Well, this is a guitar that was made by uh, Dave, wasn't it? Look at those, they're beautiful, yeah, aren't they? Oh, that was Crumb's guitar, the same guitar. Crumb's guitar. Same guitar then. And look at those. Uh, I think that says peace and love in Hebrew or something like that. <laughs> Whatever it is, it says peace and love in my book. Here's the lantern again. A mermaid. As you can see, we've chosen different inlay materials for uh, for skin tone and for the for the fishy legs. That was made on the course by um, one of my students. And that's the Northern Star. You see, you can buy shapes ready-made, and a star is one of the shapes that you can buy ready-made. So it was very simple just to lay out um, four large stars and one small one. To let, that's the Northern Star. The Southern, Cross. The, the Southern Cross constellation, yes, because that, that guitar went to New Zealand. And it's now in New Zealand, so it's got the Southern Cross. It was made from ancient cowry. Again, that's an ebony headstock. And look at that logo there, that's very simple, two shapes. Can we go back? Yeah. What I like about this penguin logo is its simplicity. It's just two shapes, and it, and yet it looks like a penguin. And so, um, with inlays, it's a very, you know, part of the skill. Well, m a lot of the skill actually is is the design of the inlay. It can't be too fiddly. Like everybody always wants their their signature in script. You know, that kind of thing. It's easy to see and see. You can press play if you want, Carol. It's easy to see and see that kind of thing. But if you're making it by hand, you'll end up snapping it, and then. Um, it's a lot harder. Pause it there, Carol, please. So this is another type of inlay where it's made up of little pieces um, and inlaid afterwards. So that was made by another one of my students, um, Naughty Nick. We call him Naughty Nick because he breaks all the rules. Um, what he did was he made a very large circular inlay um, and he inlaid into that and then he brought them along to the course. And so he inlaid his inlays on the course. Naughty Nick, he does all th everything wrong, but... Um, Apart from his beautiful work. But they do look good, don't they? He's a beautiful architectural sculpture, isn't he? Yep. Mm. So, keep going. That's a globe. Again, made by several pieces. Now, that is... Um, that's Dave. That's Dave's, Archtop Dave. That's his headstock. Um, I think that one means karma symbol. Beautiful. Look at the binding around the headstock as well. So there's quite a simple B. Um, simple shapes are a lot easier to inlay, as I was saying. So if you're going to design your own inlay, I would say if you want to do your signature, use a nice big fat pen and then it makes it easier for cutting out. So um, lettering is actually really hard <laughs> especially you know because if you imagine the difference between one font and another font the differences are minuscule and you know if you're CNCing these these inlays then it's not really such a problem but if you're making them by hand the differences between the fonts is so subtle you know you've got to cut that by hand um, it's not easy and so lettering is actually the most difficult type of inlay in my opinion. Looks nice though, doesn't it? 
So obviously the bigger the letter in, the easier it is. A big fat pen or choose a nice big chunky fat font like that. And you could put your your name on if your name's Doreen or Duncan Watson. So there's a uh, Duncan came on our course lots of times, and made lots of guitars. And this is probably his most extravagant with the full on. These are called crown inlays, what you can see there. Crown inlays. They, can, they also come as trapezoids where they've just got straight edges and they also come as just rectangles where they're straight edges. There's a nice looking one. Now you see that's six pieces. There are six pieces there, but there's only two shapes repeated. So that's quite a funky way to do it. Um, so people wonder whether you can stack the inlay up and cut three at once. No, I don't do that. I cut each piece individually. And that's um, inlaying a piece of wood instead of um, mother of pearl. I'll show you some close-ups of the different inlay materials in a minute after this. So that was me cutting the inlay and there's the hole and there's the inlay gluing into the hole and then that's after it's sanded flush. A very quick overview of the inlay technique which I'm going to show you more of in a minute. I'm going to do it live for you in a minute. So there's a nice abalone rosette and um, diamond inlays there on the fretboard. So diamonds are kind of like the next step up from dots. Dots are really easy. Diamonds are a bit more difficult, but not too much. There's our Kevin, Kevin McKean. That's uh, another little inlay. Um, nice and neat. Uh, you can see, as you can see, the tiny thin lettering of that it's very difficult and there's Mandy Green's guitar she used to draw that emblem on her pencil case when she was a, a wee girl and so when she commissioned me to make her a, um, a custom guitar we did the, the little M her logo and this is a ukulele that I made um, forget me not we made it's Moira's uke is that guitar Okay. Forget me not. Obviously, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the uh, yes, it's a guitar. So this is the um, I've got the the pattern for this. I'll show you this in a minute. This is the um, Moira's. Uh, that was Moira's um, ukulele that she made on the course. So um, yeah, obviously, I do recommend that you keep it fairly simple. Sorry, I keep saying ukulele because she came and made a ukulele first and then she came back to make a guitar. The other way around, apparently. <laughs> so Carol's here fact-checking me, you see. So there's a close-up. These are obviously forget-me-nots. <laughs> Probably. Okay. Now, um, Moira painstakingly designed this. I'll show you a better close-up of that in a minute. Yeah. Um, but she didn't make the inlays. Now, a lot of these really intricate inlays, if there isn't time to do it on the course, often there isn't time to make the inlays and inlay them on the course. So first of all, you have to make the shape. Um, and then you have to make, you have to cut the shape into the material you're inlaying. So making the shape takes half the time and inlaying it takes the other half. So to save time, we quite often send the designs to um, Mike Reed of Small Wonder. Is it .com or .co.uk? Smallwondermusic.co.uk, and he's the UK inlay guru. He makes all my logos for me, um, Bailey logos, and quite a lot of the fancy stuff. We will we'll farm out to Mike because he's the UK inlay, inlay guru um, and he makes them for us, sends them up and then we inlay them here. Can we have a better shot of this camera yeah. with that with the camera? Yeah, let's finish the video. All right, well, I'm okay. going to finish. It's not yeah, we've got some more, um, <clears throat> more inlays to show you. These are inlays, folks. So there's the forget me not. That was a round dot in the middle and then a repeating leaf shape around the outside. 
Rohan's little R on his truss rod cover. So that was handy, we could do that separately and then just add it on later. It was up the lot. So there's, maybe that'll give you a few ideas for inlays. Um, it's just a, a random collection. Carol, there was no dragon inlay. I was really hoping to show you the, the ultimate inlay that we made, which was a dragon inlay. I was hoping you wouldn't mention um, it right now. Carol was hoping I wouldn't mention it. But probably the most spectacular one that we've done was a full, a full dragon down the fretboard. Um, but we'll have to show you that another time because it's, it's not in the show. Maybe not. I'm afraid. Oh, you've got it, have you? Just get on with it. Have we got the dragon inlay or not, Carol? Not, not right now. In a bit. Right, the dragon inlay's coming up later on, folks. Judging by Carol's face. She's not actually told me, so I'm guessing. The dragon inlay's coming up later, so don't go away. Is it? Yes, it is. I hope. Can we get rid of the picture in picture, Carol? Because no, there's two images of me. It. Press pull. It wasn't on the, it wasn't on the we need to do some training on the staff. Staff training, folks. I didn't get a cup of tea or anything. Right. So there's some examples of inlays. Hopefully that um, gave you some ideas. And we'll give you some more ideas in a bit. So, um, now we've got, um, we've got the little time lapse to show, or we can do a little live demo. I think we'll do the little live demo first, right? So let's do that. Let's make some sawdust. Um, so we need to a bit less up here and a bit more down here again. Less up there, more down there, Carol. Less up there, more down there. Yeah, but you know that you put, you know that the camera, I haven't got control over that camera. With your face. What have you got control over? Not very much. Just this one. I've lost my Ailey now. I've lost my Ailey. Um, if you are considering any kind of fancy inlay and you're having it made by somebody else like Mike, then you're going to need to um, make up, like you can't just tell him I want flowers on it. It's got to be a full scale drawing of whatever it is you want. So, did Moira make two ukes? No, she made it for guitar, and then she made a uke. Well, why have I got two patterns for ukes here then? Here's a different no, one. one, this is another uke anyway. One's a pattern for the uke, and the other's a pattern for the guitar. Well, these are th that's not a guitar, Carol, these are both ukes. Do you want to argue, live on your thing? Yeah, what, I what do, because I'm a guitar maker, right. and I can tell you that that is not big enough for a guitar. How many, how many frets is the one? These are both ukes. Look how short it is, Carol. Look how short it is. Look at it, it's got one to 10 on it. It's got, it covers 10 frets. Yeah. Uke. And this one's a uke. Well, she must have picked one of Right, let's not have a row about it. She's scared I'm telling you now, it's a ukulele. If this is a guitar, it's very small. My point is, if, if you're gonna make something like this, you need a life scale, one-to-one -one scale, accurate drawing. And then I'm gonna show you how we would make that. So, can you just chuck us a pair of scissors over, please, Carol? <clears throat> So this is the demonstration part of the video. Um, let me first demonstrate why choice of materials is important. Keep doing that, don't I? So black's the easiest material to inlay. Look how crisp that looks on there. Now if you were inlaying mother, uh, into um, maple, then you can see how mother of pearl, it doesn't show up very well. It's a lot harder to see. So if you were using, obviously it depends on how it catches the light. You can see sometimes it really shines. 
and other times it doesn't catch the light and um, it can be really difficult to see um, as opposed to say on, on your ebony where it stands out really clear. So contrast is something you probably want to think about um, when, you're, when you're doing your inlays. So let's start with the most simple kind of inlay which would just be a dot. More up here, less down there Carol. So if you're going to inlay a dot, all you need is a drill and the right size bit. So it's size for size. So whatever size your dot is, that is what size hole you drill. If you order a kit from us, we do um, we do a build your own guitar kit. Um, then I, this is what we send, mother of pearl, because I think it's the, the most easy to see, easiest to inlay. So I'm going to just inlay this. This is a six mil mother of pearl dot. If we could maybe get a bit closer on it, it'd be good. Um, Obviously we measure out the position meticulously, very carefully. Carol, finger, I'm over here. So we measure out very meticulously and I'm gonna skip that bit and just mark it. So we always punch. And then drill. So if it's a six mil dot, we just drill a six mil hole. Five mil dot, five mil hole. Two mil dot, two mil hole. You get the idea. Literally just size for size. So. I'm using a brad point drill as well because it's got a point on it there. It makes it more accurate. I can put the point into the little mark that I made and then I'm just going to drill down. I'm going to aim for about the same depth as the dot. Now I cover dots on the course. So on the basic build your own guitar course, we use dots. And so I've already demonstrated this, but you see it in a lot higher quality on the, on the proper video. Doesn't sound very good, does it? Okay, so if you drill your hole a little bit too deep, don't worry, you've just got to not push your dot in too far. If you drill your hole too shallow, then you just pop your drill back in and drill it again. Right, I'm going to fill my hole with super glue. Make sure it's spread all the way around the edges. And then drop my dot in. Just drop it in. Now the idea is to press it in with a bit of scrap wood and it needs to sit just sticking up, just slightly proud we say. So slightly proud, that means it's still sticking up just a little bit. Now this is accelerator for super glue. So this, this stuff, um, zip kicker, is, uh, can you zoom out just a little bit Carl? Is, um, it's like Viagra for super glue. So that glue is now dry already. It dries instantly with this stuff. This stuff makes it dry instantly. It's called accelerator. Um, and so now we can just sand that flush. And look at that. Beautiful. So now you know how it's done, folks. The most basic type of inlay, look at that. People are always asking me, how do you get those in there? And so now you know. So round dots are easy. Look how crisp that is. How quick it was as well, look how quick it was. Now anything other than a round dot 
is another story. So let's get into that one. I'll show you another story. Um, let's use a bit of Moira's, shall we? Um, so what we would do is we've got this design, this meticulous design. Obviously we would photocopy it. So I'm not using the original. And then notice we've marked out all the frets. What? <laughs> so we cut these out now. In fact, I'm only just going to cut it very roughly. Because um, I'm going to stick it on to my material. So I talked quickly about materials for inlaying. Here are the inlay materials themselves. So the white stuff is called Mother of Pearl. White stuff is called Mother of Pearl. This stuff is called Abalone. The coloured stuff is called Abalone. I'll show you where it comes from. So this is a shell. Um, this is an Abalone shell. You can see it's got the colours in it. So Mother of Pearl is is more white and Abalone is, is has the colours. And you can see how rough that is. I'll maybe get a close-up of that. You see how rough that is. You'll probably have seen shells like this. You can buy these in tourist shops. This is from New Zealand. Uh, actually, this one probably isn't, but this is. So this is what they sell to tourists in New Zealand. This is the, the power. This is what it looks like when it's been cleaned up and polished. Look at that. Isn't that spectacular? Absolutely beautiful. You can see the three dimensionality of it. I'm working on upgrading the, um, the cameras as well. Wow. So, um, so you get a better image. So this is, that's enough, Carol. This is abalone. Thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> that's for the thumbnail. <laughs> so that's what it starts out like, and then they polish it like that. Um, actually, they do that for the tourists. Um, for guitar makers, they they cut it into slices and then polish it, fl make it, make flat bits. So that's, um, that is why, if you can see it's curved, that's why the pieces are always so small. Um, if you buy real abalone or mother of pearl, can you switch cameras please, Carol? If we buy real abalone or mother of pearl, then this is the size that comes. It doesn't come much bigger than this. Because as you've seen, it's a curved surface. And to get it flat for inlaying, for working, you need to cut smaller pieces so this is what they call abalam now abalam is made from the waste material when they make this and whatever else there is they make jewelry and stuff so there's always lots of little chips of waste and some bright spark came up with a way of making it's kind of like plywood with shell so this is real Abalam, sorry, this is real New Zealand power abalone. It's real abalone, but it's super thin wafers. It's basically the scrap. And they've found a way of gluing it together, 40 layers thick. So um, you, you won't even be able to see how thin the layers are. There's 40 layers in there. And um, the, it's glued together so tightly that when you when you sand it you can't see the glue joints so it just looks like real abalone you can't buy real abalone in these sizes but but if if you need to make a big inlay then it's certainly an option um, personally I use a lot of this rather than real abalone because it's more ecologically sound there's a lot it's a lot less wasteful less wasteful so less wasteful folks so I like to use this stuff, it's a lot cheaper as well. 
Um, and by the time you've made your inlay, you can't really tell. Having said that, there are some times where you want to use, you can see the grain in this, it's got a particular grain. Well, that might just fit with your design. So sometimes we'll use these kind of grains as part of the design. Like, I don't know, imagine if you were to inlay in a fish or something and you wanted it to be stripy like that. Then you could use that to give it that sort of a stripy effect. Uh, every piece is different, individual. Um, whereas these sheets kind of, they always kind of look the same. So there's that. So m mother of pearl, I'll just see if I can quickly find a piece of mother of pearl. I don't throw anything away. So when I've finished making an inlay, I always keep the offcuts. Here's a load of like offcuts with the bits cut out. So that was an inlay I made and that's what's left over. So I'll, I'll keep all these because all these little bits can still be used. All these little bits can still be used for something else. In fact, let's see if we can use one now for this little design. So. Question about sandpaper, go on then folks. The EP has asked, what sandpaper did you use to sand the dot? So what sandpaper do you use for? Well, if it's a big chunky inlay, then I'll probably use 80 grit. But if it's if it's just a little inlay like that, I, that was 120 grit. You don't need to get too rough with it. Um, I certainly wouldn't use 60 grit on an inlay because the scratch would be so deep. By the time you've sanded the scratch out, you've sanded the inlay out. Um, you do need to work fairly accurately. Um, when you glue it in, you want it to be just slightly proud. So most of the inlay is in the piece that you're keeping and you're only sanding the very top bit. Okay, so um, let's see if we've got a bit of scrap mother of pearl that's big enough. Um, Probably not. What I'll do then is I'm just going to do that little curl there. Let's cut one of these off and do it in two pieces. Right. So the plan is I'm going to work over here, Carol, on, on this bench here. Now, uh, this is my little bench that I use for inlays. Look at this, it's just a bit of plywood. I made it this morning actually because I lost my old one with a slot in it. I'll show you what that's for in a minute. What I'm going to do is just stick that on there where I want it. So you can use any glue for this, right? But just for speed, I'm going to use super glue. Um, normally I would use maybe white glue and I would leave it for half an hour. Right, so stick that on there. The trouble with super glues is there's always the danger that you end up sticking yourself to your guitar and uh, heading down casualty with a guitar stuck to your face. Right, so if you're going to get into inlaying, you need a few tools. You need your workboard and you'll need a saw. So this is a jeweler's saw. Um, I got mine from David Dyke, um, but I know that that's um, Luthier Supplies down south. But I know that um, Mike Reed also sells these, um, and you get them from any guitar maker supplies will sell these. It's, it's a jeweler's saw. And the blades are so fine that they just break quite often. So you buy, I buy, um, I buy packs of 10. Um, I bought medium, fine and extra fine. And I, I usually use the medium ones, to be honest. But I've run out. So I'm now using the fine size. Obviously, I've got these blades from Stuart McDonald, as you can see. Um, but they're available. I believe that um, they are available in the UK. From those places I just mentioned. So the blades are so fine, 
It's incredible what you can do with these. So you can set yourself up for doing guitar inlays very inexpensively. Um, certainly, well, less than 20 or 30 pounds for a saw and some blades and you're away. So let's clamp that in there. A little bit of tension on it. Pardon? 45 minutes already, folks. Bloody hell. Didn't it go fast? Can you just type, so whilst you're doing that, you've Yeah, let's have some questions while I'm trying to get this blade in. Um, you've also just shout out to Lavi Guitars in Israel. You have to shout out. Well, you, they can hear you. Can they? Yeah. Hello to Lavi Guitars in Israel. Hello, welcome. Hello, got, Lavi Guitars. We've got Cyprus watching. Um, there's a name, but I've lost it, sorry. And um, we've also got a venue from Russia. He's watching at the moment, as well as Theron and Cleveleys and TV in Nor Norfolk and there's a variety of people from all over the place. We've got Dumfries on the line as well. Right, I'm going to sit down for this one. And also, I'm going to put my mask on. So this stuff, it's not, it's not the most pleasant stuff to work with. You really should be wearing a mask. Check out my mask, folks. Look at that. So this was... Um, this was made specially for me by, um, well it was sent to me by Marcel, it's made by his wife. So, Paula. Thanks Marcel and Paula for making uh, making my, uh, my new mask. Awesome. Mask on. Okay. Now, it's easy to work with a large piece. So the smaller the piece, the harder it is. So what should I do first? I think what I'll do is I'll cut the inside shape first. So I use my board here like this to keep my saw vertical. And then get a close-up hole and make sure it all looks good. It's amazing how accurate you can cut this. Just keep it flat. Don't let it bounce, otherwise you'll break a blade. So it's all about planning, folks, with the inlay. Look, imagine if I'd have cut the outside first, and then I've got to hold that while I cut that little bit out the middle. Well, I've cut the middle out first, and now I can actually use my little files to clean it up before I cut the rest out. So with inlays, all you need is a little jeweler's saw and some needle files, or you might want some four inch files. These are four inch files, different shapes, range of different shapes and sizes. Four inch needle files. And then some even smaller needle files that I picked up from somewhere. Jewelers needle files for getting right into the corners. 
So basically, with a saw like this, which costs less than 30 pounds for a really good one, some blades and some foils, you can be set up for making um, inlays. You don't need a lot of tools. And to actually inlay them into the guitar, you'll need a miniature router, which I'll show you in a minute. So we can use a, a file there to just clean up those saw marks and take it down to the line if you need to. So a bit of tidying up with a file. Keep this file vertical. Sometimes I'll use the edge of the, the board there to keep the file vertical. There we go. Now I'm going to cut the outside shape. Starting from that point there. Can you see, um, can't see a pencil with a rubber, can you, Carl? Any pencil will do then. Sometimes with very small pieces, I'll use a pencil with a rubber on the end to hold it to save my fingers. I'll only do that with very, very, very small pieces though. It can get fiddly. Here's another tip. If you're doing any inlays, sweep the floor first. I promise you, sweep the floor first because if you drop this, into a load of sawdust, you'll never see it again. Ask me how I know. So I'm always impressed how strong this stuff is. This is mother of pearl and abalone is almost as strong, maybe not quite. But even though I'm cutting a very, very thin piece there, it hasn't snapped yet. But it can do if you're not careful. Okay. Clean up that outside edge. It's amazingly strong, isn't it? But it is quite brittle, it will snap if you test it. Taking off any little lumps and bumps. That's good enough for, for um, demonstration purposes. So that would be one part of our tree of life design there. So that is how we make the piece. Obviously I would spend the rest of the day making all the rest of the pieces. And then we have to inlay it into the fretboard. So that's the next stage. Let me show you that right now. So if we go over to this part of the bench, Carl. And I'll put my inlay there. Now, this part of my fretboard, I'm gonna cut off later. Um, it's just a bit of scrap. I'm going to cut this off past the nut. So I'm using this as a piece of scrap wood just to demonstrate for you guys. Um, what I will do is clamp it. And so now we need to temporarily fix this into place. So um, 
How much worse should I do it? I'll do it there. Right. So as you'll see in the film coming up, I'm going to show you a four minute film very soon where I inlay an entire fretboard. Um, I do this exact thing. Um, what's important is to make sure it's exactly in the right place first, okay? So you might want a pair of tweezers. Um, and you need to lay it out exactly where you want it first. And then you need to glue it in place temporarily. So here, what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of glue on the table there. And I'm going to use my pointer to put a tiny little drop of super glue, maybe three little drops. So this is part of the skill actually, is putting on just enough glue to hold it, but not too much because you need to get it off again afterwards. So we temporarily fix the inlay into place. Let's give it a squirt just to help it. We're going to use some heat to get it off later. Okay, so now we need to scribe the shape. So you can use a scalpel. I've got a few different tools you could use here. A scalpel. Well, this is just an old, like a cheap precision screwdriver, and I've just ground a sharp edge onto it. Um, I'm just looking for a normal scalpel. Here's a normal scalpel. You can use this, um, but I prefer to use a point, something with a point on it, because what I find is that a scalpel can tend to follow the grain of the wood, whereas a point will ride over the grain and um, be more accurate. So let's just use my homemade scriber. Homemade scriber. Well, I hope the picture looks as good to you guys at home. It looks pretty good. I think the, the lights have certainly improved things. Now, when you're marking, I always mark away from a sharp corner. So I'm going to mark this way, like this, away from that sharp corner. The reason being, if you go this way, when you get to the end, it's easy to slip, and you slip off, and you scratch your fretboard. So we mark away from the sharp corners. Always away from a corner. I'm going to just quickly finish going all the way around. I would normally take a lot more care. I'm just trying to do it super fast for you guys. Because I don't want to bore the pants off ya. Do we have any questions while I'm just doing this? Well, um, so you've had a few... Um, uh, my, my said, how, how is it that you've not, not lost any fingers doing all that kind of sawing work? Are there any tips, I think, about... Cause it looks Those like little saws it. don't cut your fingers, it's funny. You can almost use your fingers as just a guide. Um, they don't... That's the, the saw's so fine, it's just, it's just like... Um, it almost feels like you're sanding rather than cutting. Okay. The, the teeth are so fine, um, it doesn't really cut you. EP has asked, um, have you ever snapped any inlays um, when you've got to a big bit, <laughs> when you thought you nearly finished? I'm looking for the iron, Carol. What iron? Any iron. I've only got one iron. Found it. Iron. Found it. What, in the cupboard where it lives? In the cupboard where it lives. I've changed cupboards though. Um, so to get the inlay off, I just use a hot iron. Um, it's going to take, this, this is a travel iron, it heats up really super fast. Uh, I've never ironed any clothes with this. They know that. Um, Bob May said so he thinks it's going to stick to dots. Yes, exactly. Um, I get a lot of folks on the course and they come with all big fancy ideas. and. Uh, yeah, halfway through there, you know, on day three of their dragon inlay. Oh, I've gone all blurry. That's your that's that little camera, it's not me. On day three of their dragon inlay, they're cursing themselves. But I always warn them 
you know, I've worn them. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, folks, is that um, you can, this is called cutting paste. So you put this on your saw blade and it cuts, it cuts a bit smoother. So um, you can cut even smoother if you put cutting paste on you. That's the, um, that's what um, a professional would do <laughs> instead of someone who was just bodging it on the live stream. Um, so that's the cutting paste. It makes it cut smoother, and it also keeps the dust down a little bit. Oh, that was a question. Have I ever snapped an inlay? Oh yes. Oh yes. I once made. Um, there were quite a lot of inlays that I've done that weren't in the slideshow, unfortunately. But um, I did do, um, if you look up the Lion Rampant guitar, I made an arch top with a Lion Rampant doing that. <laughs> uh, and it was like a, I think it was like a 14 piece inlay. And uh, I had it all laid out and I dropped his leg. <laughs> Never found it. I had to make him another leg. So somewhere in here, there's a lion's leg lying about. Um, another time I was making an inlay, a really intricate one. This was another one, it was about, I think this one was 19 pieces. It was a, st a star inside a star. <laughs> really complicated. And I had it all laid out on my bench and somebody visited my workshop. I won't mention any names. <laughs> but somebody came in and, and um, basically knocked it on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> all my hard work was scattered all over the floor. We spent hours looking on the floor for bits of Yeah, day, can we have a close-up down here? So I'm just going to use a little bit of heat to just um, warm up the glue and it allows it to, to release. So um, the easiest way to break one is just to go in at a point like that and try and prise it off. So we don't do that. We're going to go in and try and catch as much of the inlay as possible. Let's heat it up a bit more. I try and touch as much of the inlay as possible instead of just jabbing it into a corner. Um, and that should come off now. Yeah, if I've got more time, then I, I would use wood glue and it comes off a little bit easier. There, you can see, if you're gonna break one, that's a good opportunity to break one right there. And this is uh, chalk. It's actually French chalk, probably from a puncture outfit. <laughs> what this does is it just makes it show up a bit clearer. Can you see that? Ooh. Hopefully you can now see the shape. And here's my Dremel. So this is a miniature outer. You buy this piece <clears throat> you buy this piece I can't remember what the cost is there's all different ones but um, you, you take this piece off and it, there's a piece that screws off and you screw it into this so this is a miniature router base there's several places you can get these from mine's from Stumac but um, you can get them from um, uh, Tone Tech I believe does a similar thing in the UK I'm not affiliated to any of these guys by the way but I'd like to think they're my friends so um, I, I wouldn't recommend anybody that I didn't use myself so here's some uh, different um, bits I'm going to use this one it's a sixteenth inch and we need to try and set the depth to be, Carol? Well, they can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to try and set the depth to about the same as the inlay. You get the idea. We can always do a shallow cut and then a deeper cut to finish it off. Right, let's try that. I'll try and do it so you can actually see what I'm doing. If you line up the camera so that 
you can look through this gap. There we go, beautiful. It usually takes three goes to get it in. So the first go, that's just a real rough cut. Really rough. Now I'm going to go around the edges. So that's two goes. Now my third go, what you can do is put it in and just scribe around it again and see where it's not fitting. It just shows up a bit clearer where it's, it needs a bit more. Um, but it's now a case of trial and error. So it usually takes me two or three goes to get it in. Um, you can spend as much time as you like. Right, let's hope it goes in after this one. Um, you can use smaller cutters for finer cuts, obviously. Don't worry too much about points. Um, obviously the cutter's round, so it's going to leave um, round corners. You can use a chisel to take out the very fine corners. Excellent. So we're coming up for an hour. We've done an hour, folks. Um, we're almost there, this is almost in, and I'm gonna show you how we clean it up, and I'm gonna show you um, the time-lapse film, and then I've got a question for you at the end. Okay, so it can take a few goes to get it in. I might actually just set it a tiny bit deeper and go around one more time. Okay, it's in. Fill the hole with glue. It's not a bad idea to get some masking tape and just protect the area around the inlay so that you don't get glue everywhere. Fill the hole with glue and drop in your inlay. Now if this was ebony we could use black glue We're just going to use clear glue this time. We'll give that a minute to dry. Give it a squirt, and then I'll clean it up and show you what it looks like. So, um, do we have a question while that's just drying? Yes, I've got two questions for you. One um, was by, uh, oh, I've got his name. Uh, Yushui, um, uh, Achilles. He's asked, can you use a hand drill? So do you have, what can you do if you haven't got a dremel, basically? Um, well, I guess you could use um, a tiny little chisel. Do it, do it by hand with a little chisel. 
um, like a little dentist chisel. You wouldn't use a hand drill? Um, I wouldn't use a hand drill, no. I would if I was doing round inlays, but if I was doing shaped inlays, it's easier just to scribe the hole, get a little miniature chisel and just gouge it out. Um, next question is from TV, right? He's asking, um, where did you get your Dremel bits from? Because he bought some cheap ones of Evil Bay. Yeah. And uh, he, he doesn't know, they're not, they're not very good. Yeah, so I get mine. These ones are from Stu Mac, Stuart McDonald. Um, there are other guitar maker suppliers out there. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, um, I've used I use uh, the ones from Stuart McDonald at the moment. There we go. And that's our inlay. So it'll look better when it's polished. But that gives you an idea. There you go. Now, if I'd left it a little bit longer, it would be even crisper. If we get super close up on that car you can see you can see the join there so some it's not perfect you can see that uh, some wood dust has gone in with the glue um, but also some mother of pearl dust probably went in there as well so it's probably not as crisp as it could have been if I'd waited a bit longer then um, it would probably be a little bit crisper but that's not too bad is it it looks like a C for Carol, doesn't it? Um, it's a bit blurry, Carol. You can zoom out just a touch. Well, it was all right, and then it went blurry. Right, so Thomas has asked, um, hello Thomas, he's asked, can you use a mix of transparent glue and rosewood dust? Yes. Yep, you can make a paste, whatever, whatever um, wood you're using. Um, you can fill any gaps with wood dust and glue, for sure. Yes. Obviously, um, it looks a lot better on ebony and darker woods. This is rosewood. If we'd done that on the ebony, on the, on the, if we'd done that on the maple, it would look really bad. So that's that. We're going to show you a little time lapse now of another guitar that I inlaid um, for a customer. This was a custom guitar, and uh, I'm going to just talk you through it, what we did. Do you and want to set up the cam the when it ends? You just have to press push and then oh, it, will, okay. it should work. If you so press start the film and press push, then um, what you'll see is I'm, um, so, I've made an acoustic guitar for, is it Bill? Okay, yes. And I can't, I can't actually find, I can't find a, pick or a picture there. Right, here it is. So that's the well, guitar press there. Push. Press push, yeah. There's the guitar, completely bare. I'm going to put an inlay on the headstock and all the way down the fretboard. Catherine, that was his wife's name. Daughter's name. Daughter's name, sorry. <laughs> Carol's fact checking me <laughs> just as well, isn't it? So I spend quite a lot of time laying it out. Watch this. It takes ages to lay it out. Obviously, we're in um, time lapse, so it's, quick, it's quicker in time lapse, but I spend a, a lot of time just making sure everything's in exactly the right place. Has to be done by hand. So um, if you were doing this with a CNC, you could CNC the the may, the, um, the mother of pole. You could also CNC the fretboard. Oh look, I took a picture of it. It looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> and there's me scribing around. So obviously in time-lapse, it's a lot quicker. It took me quite a while. I always go around it three times. You saw me use a, a, a pointy thing again, but I used a scalpel just to get right into the corners. Sometimes I would use a scalpel just to get right into those sharp corners. Um, so they're kisses. Hmm. And that's his initials. Looks a bit like Warner Brothers, doesn't it? But it's not. Looks like the Disney font. <laughs> Don't sue me. So there's me heating them up again to get them off. And um, here we go with the Dremel. And there's the chalk so that it shows up. See, so it's all pretty straightforward. Now, I want you to notice how much better it looks than what we just did with the live stream. 
so this this shows you what um, obviously you're watching this through another live stream so it's reduced in quality but when you watch it um, you get the full quality and it's a lot better quality than what you're getting just now on YouTube live something to do with YouTube um, you lose a bit of quality so um, on the on the guitar making site if you go there you'll see everything's a lot clearer um, so a lot of guitar making jobs there's really only two skills involved you've got material to remove so you need to know where to remove it from <laughs> and then you need to know how to remove it that's basically it so in this case we're using a Dremel to remove the material that we don't want um, effectively routing out a little hole trying to get it as perfect as possible you can see me wearing my um, close-up goggles there they've got a little torch on and uh, and then magnify so that I can see a little bit clearer you can get right in there and I can see a lot more clearer than I can see with my normal eyes um, great for that sort of inlay work um, on this guitar I also inlaid the rosette I believe I'm not sure if you see it on this film probably not but there's me masking up all the bits to, we don't want glue going down into the fret slots um, and this is I'm um, inlaying rosewood so I've, um, now there I've made a paste with rosewood dust so in this case I'm using epoxy and the live demo here I used super glue for speed if I'm in a hurry if I'm not in a hurry then I'll use epoxy because it gives you longer working time um, I used a hairdryer there just to soften the glue and that just allows any air bubbles to evaporate and pop and there it is so hi Bill <laughs> Whee! so that that, that was um, that was uh, the guitar being inlaid and as you can see it looks they just look like messy blobs when you're finished and then simple case of just sanding it like you saw me do on this inlay here and then hopefully we've got a picture of the, the finished guitar we find oh so apparently we... Carol couldn't find a finished picture of the guitar I'm actually looking again now. so um, you get the idea anyway if we have a close-up of this one again Carol then that shows us what it looks like when it's finished um, where can they see pictures of that guitar then um, I'm going to try and actually... well maybe on workshop Wednesday if you tune in on yeah. workshop Wednesday folks I'll show you pictures of that guitar finished um, right so you've had the question um, Bill Flood has asked how thick should the inlay material be so the inlay material usually comes about between 1.5 to 2 mil thick this this is your inlay material it's about a sixteenth of an inch thick to 2 mil depending on the material and um, where you get it from um, I'll show you the other one. it's usually about 2 mil thick just under brilliant so that was fun wasn't it folks do we have any any other things to show them yeah we've got uh, star inlay haven't we oh right the star inlay yes ah right so what I've shown you so far is really easy inlays dots and then I've shown you custom inlays um, fancy any shape you want inlay right well there's another type of inlay that you can do where you use a jig so if there's an inlay with a repeated shape for instance the one I'm just about to show you is uh, the star inlay that, um, that Fiona made um, it went on to um, a single cut guitar that um, Billy and Fiona made for their daughter I believe actually Fiona, Fiona made it Fiona did all the woodwork it went on Fiona's guitar did it? no no it went on they made it for Iona it's right. 21st birthday so Fiona, Fiona did all the woodwork Iona's mum made it for Iona the daughter and it was a beautiful Les Paul with um, with a star inlay on it so um, it's a repeated shape so this star inlay I believe it was 10 pieces five of them are mother of pearl 
and five of them are abalone. And they're all the same shape, and when you assemble it, it makes a star. So the point being that there are some types of inlay that can be made with a jig. So there, what I've shown you here today is a very basic um, overview of some inlay techniques. But there are lots of little tricks um, making, um, making little jigs to make block inlays, um, trapezoids, diamonds. There's all these little jigs that you can make to make these jigs e uh, to make these inlays easier to make. So um, we'll be covering all that on the, on the on the guitar making course. We won't get into all that right now. Um, so there's going to be a lot more. The inlay course is probably ninety percent. Um, edited so it's going to be appearing on the guitar making site pretty soon um, maybe one day we'll have enough money to hire an editor and then we can get stuff out twice as fast but until then you're stuck with me guys and I can only do so much so um, I'm working on the inlay course and um, and then we're going to be moving on and covering a load of other stuff including guitar finishing is coming up so uh, that's the major thing so we're going to show you a little um, a very short little slideshow of how this is an example of an inlay that's made using a jig so it's a really simple jig if we just play the, the thing carol um, and press push again so i'm in the yeah. corner so star inlay um right, there's the headstock notice the two-piece headstock now if you pause it carol that is the little jig that we made look that's fine pause it there that's fine even there that's fine so it's a little mitre jig. You can see there's two cuts on it. And all I've done is I've put a piece of scrap in and I've made two cuts and you can see it's left that little triangle in the middle. Can you go back one picture, Carol? Um, I, think I just have to move the cursor back. Yeah, that's all right. You can move the cursor. There you can see me doing a cut and you can see me using the, the pencil that I told you about earlier with an eraser on the end. It's like, um, it's like having an extra finger to help hold really small pieces. So that's what I'm doing there. As you can see, the jig is really simple. It's just a strip of wood with a slot down the middle that your piece fits into, and then two angled cuts to make the two cuts. And you just run the saw through. We did that five times with Mother of Pearl, five times with Abalone, if you play it again. Um, I was actually looking for that jig earlier. I was hoping that I, was, I could have it here to show you. But it's really simple. Um, just a slot with two cuts. And we do two cuts. You're left with a triangle piece. And you can just see the, the star form in there if you look in the, on the edge of the screen. There's the star. Fully formed with Mother of Pearl Abalone, Mother of Pearl Abalone. So you can use the two different colours to make like a three dimensional effect. Uh, is there a picture of the finished inlay? So this is um, inlaying into the fretboard. Can we see that again? Yeah. If your inlay covers more than one fret, as you can see on this one, it's on the 12th fret, but it's such a big star, it goes into the 11th and the 13th fret. If that's the case, whatever your inlays is, like your Tree of Life, for instance, your, p your pieces might be bigger than the frets. What you do in that case is you put your inlay in and then you recut the fret slot. Simple. So there's the inlay marked out. There's Fiona working hard. Hey Fiona. There's the star, close up of the star. Um, I'm not sure, I haven't seen this, so I don't know whether we've got it actually in the in the guitar or not. There it is in the neck. Do we see it sanded? Nice blurry picture. So that's Fiona actually sanding it. And there it is done. You can see the fret slots aren't cut yet. Um, it's inlaid, sanded flush. And then you can see where the slots have been cut and the frets have been put in. That's the finished guitar. And it uh, looks stunning eh, when it's been polished up. Look at that. So that was a guitar made on the course, build your own custom guitar and um, that's the kind of thing you can pretty much do anything you want. Um, people come to the workshop and 
The courses start at five days and they can be eight days or longer depending on your guitar. But with the current situation, we're all on lockdown. So um, whatever's going on with, with, um, with you guys, we're on lockdown anyway. So we're stuck in the workshop. Um, people can't come to the workshop. And so all my workshop courses have been canceled. And we're also gigging musicians, so all our gigs have been canceled as well. So um, I just want to thank you guys for, if you've stayed, we're obviously coming to the end now. If you've stayed till the end, I just want to thank you guys. And I want to thank you for all the amazing support we've had over the years and specifically over the last month or so since we've been live streaming. Um, I created this channel really just for my promotion videos for the guitar making site but um, it was about four years ago and people have been subscribing gradually and we're approaching 5,000 subscribers now so we're going to have to do like a 5,000 subscriber special aren't we um, we've also got the, the lockdown guitar that I made so I made this guitar um, completely from scratch uh, from raw blocks of wood live on the internet um, over the last month there's a playlist if you go to um, the guitar making channel you can see a playlist of how I did that but I just want to point out that that was a very quick simple guitar and a very quick overview if you want the full-on course then you need to go and sign up you need to become a premier member for um, guitarmaking.co.uk um, we appreciate that all the support really helps us a lot it's keeping us going at the moment um, you don't have to become a full premium member you can just become a supporter um carol's got a question we've got a well it's just that um uh Eveni in russia asked a question really a long time ago and as you're talking about this guitar he was he said he's a beginner what would you recommend what's the best wood that you would recommend to build um so as you've got that guitar that you could tell so on the course about. um and also if you just go through the playlist on on, on the youtube channel i've got a video wooden parts for your first guitar if you're making the guitar for the first time, I recommend mahogany for the neck and body and rosewood for the fretboard for workability and also they sound fantastic. So you can't really go wrong with mahogany for your first guitar. Um, any idiot can go and buy a really expensive piece of wood and take a picture of it and it'll look fantastic. But what I'm more interested in is how does it play? Anybody can go and buy really expensive pickups and put them on their guitar and it'll sound great. But what I'm in really interested in is, does it play? How does it feel? And how does it play? So that is what my courses are all about. So although we build fairly basic guitar on the course, what is important is the methods. So if you can crack these methods, get these methods down, um, they're very basic really. Um, I've broken it all down into very simple jobs that can all be done in about 10 to 20 minutes. And I believe that anybody can do it. I know anybody could do it because I taught face to face over 400 people how to do it. So having said that, I think we'll wrap it up. I did have one question for you guys. Um, I don't know whether this is appropriate or anything, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Um, the guitar making channel is monetized. So, I want to know, do the ads annoy you? Shall I cancel, demonetize the channel? Because to be honest, the money that we make from YouTube is a pittance. It doesn't even cover my bus fare. So um, it's not worth it. And I would rather you guys had a much better experience. So um, will you let me know in the comments, ads yes or no? I might make a poll. So um, if you go to the, um, <clears throat> go to the community tab, on guitarmaking.co.uk you'll see we quite often have a little poll the one that's running currently is what shall we do with the lockdown guitar so if you want to go and stick your oar in there um, are we going to raffle it auction it or something else you decide YouTube um, if you decide something else you've got to at least give us a clue what you want us to do with it um, at the moment it seems to be that a raffle is winning so we're going to have to work something out Maybe we can wrap it all up with the um, 5,000 subscriber special. Who knows? Anyway. Wait, I'm actually, I might be able to...
I'm trying to forget the dragon book to finish with. So are there any, I'm just checking any more questions. Uh, Carol's trying to find a picture of the dragon to finish off. Yeah, we're getting lots of good feedback, lots of... Uh, well, I'm done, so. Unless there's something else. I've actually um, found. I'm not one of those people that like the sound of his own voice, folks. So as soon as I've finished doing what I'm doing, I want to get off. My plan for YouTube is to get on, do something useful, and then get off again. So that's my plan. So Carol couldn't get the dragon guitar up. So I'm going to stop waffling. Um, my work here is done. If you found something useful, please subscribe, like, share, all that YouTube stuff. It really helps. We're trying to build the channel up um, for our 5,000 YouTuber special. Rock and roll.